there! Today I'm going to show you how to crochet this lemon peel stitch washcloth. If you've never crocheted before, we are going to start with the basics of the chain stitch, the single crochet, and the double crochet. If you are familiar with those crochet stitches, you can skip ahead to the nine minute mark where we'll start talking specifically about this crochet washcloth pattern. So grab your crochet hook and your yarn and let's get going. For this, I'm gonna use a USH uh, five millimeter crochet hook and Lily Sugar and Cream yarn. To start any crochet, you have to have the chain row. So we're gonna make our chain row first by making this slip knot. And I like to hold the tail into my the hand that I'm holding the needle with. And so that then we're just gonna grab the yarn with our crochet hook. So that's two chains, three chains, four chains, five, six, seven. In counting your stitches, don't count the slip knot that you started with and don't count the loop that's on your needle. So eight, and then we're gonna do one more and this is your turning chain and you're gonna do this at the beginning of every row. So uh, we're gonna be doing single crochet. So I just did one single crochet turning stitch or one single crochet chain. Now we're gonna go into the second stitch from the needle. And this is only on the beginning row. You're gonna start the second stitch from the needle. I'm gonna grab the yarn and pull it back through. And then I'm gonna grab it again and pull it through both loops. And there's your first single crochet. And I'm just gonna repeat that for every chain. And since I chained eight, I'm going to be doing eight single crochets. one of the biggest things is to keep your tension the same and, and I also didn't mention on your when you're chaining those your row do it loosely don't do it too tightly um, you will it'll be hard to get to do your single crochets into those chains if they're too tight So you should have eight little bees on top for the eight crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So at this point, we're gonna turn it to go back again. And we're gonna have to do another turning chain. And we're doing a single crochet, so we're just doing one. And this time we're gonna go right into that very first stitch. And make sure you get under the, under the both strands of yarn under that V that we just saw. So just repeat this process once again. We chained eight, and so we're gonna have eight single crochets unless we miss one or do too many. So it's always good to just kind of count them as you go along. So you make sure you get underneath that V. And that that's going to be on your second row. You won't see the V when you're chaining that very first row from your, your chain row. You're only going to see that V when you've already had a crochet stitch below it. So get that, get that V. We're 
going to turn it down this time we're going to show you double crochet and where we did a one chain turning chain for a single crochet we're actually going to do three chains for a double crochet so there's one two so there's my three for my turning chain okay then you wrap your needle around your yarn around your needle for the double you're going to skip the first stitch and go into that second one because that turning chain you just did counts as your first stitch So then you wrap your yarn around your needle again. I'm sorry, you round your crochet hook. Make sure you get through those two Vs. Pull your yarn through. Pull it through again. So wrap your yarn around your crochet hook into your stitch under the two Vs. Wrap your yarn around and pull through two. Wrap your yarn around, yarn around and pull through two again. Wrap your yarn around into the stitch. Pull it through. Wrap your yarn, pull it through two. Wrap your yarn, pull it through two again. Okay, when you, at that very end stitch, make sure you're getting under those two Vs. All right, once again, we're gonna do another double crochet. So we need to have three link turning chain. Wrap your yarn around, go into that second stitch. So these two basic stitches, the double crochet and the single crochet, are what we're gonna use to knit this washcloth. All right, and make sure you get under those two Vs. Or the one V under the two stitches that form the V. All right, so when we look at this, you can see I have the two rows of double crochet on top and the two rows of single crochet on the bottom. And, and as the name would imply, the double crochet is twice as tall as the single crochet. You see that? There's the two singles and there's your two doubles. All right, so now let's get started on our washcloth. And if you need to go back and refresh yourself with those other stitches, feel free. So in this, for this washcloth, we're gonna chain 32. And once again, keep your chain loose. And once again, in counting the number of chains, don't count the slip knot that you did at the very beginning, and don't count the loop that's on your needle, on your crochet hook. All 
All right, then I'm gonna do one additional for my turning chain, and I'm gonna go in. There's the first chain, here's the second chain. I'm gonna go in the second chain for the very foundation row, and I'm gonna single crochet. Then I'm gonna double crochet into the next stitch. And I'm just gonna repeat that. Single crochet, double, double crochet for the entire row. And because we have an even number of stitches, we are gonna end up on a double crochet. And you need to make sure you end up on a double crochet. If you end up on a single, you need to go back out and rip it out to get back to your, so that you do have a double crochet on the end for this pattern. If you've been a knitter, you will find that unraveling your work on crochet is much more forgiving than unraveling a knit piece. For this foundation row, you'll notice that when you are picking up your stitches, you're not having that V. You're only, there's only one stitch under with you're taking your crochet hook. You're only gonna have that V after you finish this foundation row for the rest of the pattern. To keep your tension consistent throughout, um, that's you know the biggest thing in having a, a piece that's a nice square. And you know, here's an example of I, I pulled too tight on that stitch, so it was a little snug getting in there. But this way, you want to keep your your foundation chain loose. All right, so we've done that first row now. We're gonna do our turning row, our turning chain, and we're gonna go in the very first stitch. On the foundation row, we did the second stitch. From now on, we're gonna single crochet into the very first stitch. It's going to single crochet and double crochet. The rest of it is the same exact pattern for the entire washcloth. You will want to make sure that you end on a double crochet on every single row. You can look at the top of the stitches and if you look real carefully you'll notice that the double crochet where you had a double crochet they're a little little longer than where you had a single crochet. That's one way you can stay on pattern. Also, you can notice that, you know, the double crochets are, are a bigger stitch, obviously, than the single crochets. So as you're going along, if you put your work down, you need to pick it back up. Look at the Vs up top to see if you can tell the difference between a bigger and a smaller, and also look at, you know, the stitch below to make sure you, you know that you're putting a double crochet on top of a single crochet and vice versa, a single crochet on top of a double and a double on top of a single. You're going to continue on in this pattern until your washcloth measures approximately 10 inches tall. Check the width, make sure that's where you are uh, with the gauge I used and the number of stitches we chained on work was 10 inches. At the end of the day, you just want a square, so make it as tall as it is wide.
All right, so here I am at the very last row. And I love, I love the, uh, and you can see why they call it a lemon peel stitch, the little pucker, light pucker of it. All right, at this very last stitch, I just worked one, I'm gonna work two more into this corner stitch. I'm not binding off my yarn, I'm keeping my yarn intact from when I did my chain stitch. All right, so there's three stitches into that corner. That's just gonna help me go around that corner nice and crisply. And then you're gonna pick up with this 10 inch washcloth approximately 20 stitches on each side for a total of 80. Uh, if your washcloth is a little bigger, you you know adjust that up. At the end of the day, you want an even number. Um, and I find every two to three spaces gives me about 20, for this washcloth size, about 20 pickups on each side. And that 80 stitches includes the corners. Um, not the three you put into each corner, but each corner counts as one stitch. see the difference that that makes right off. So continue working, finish cleaning up your edges, remembering to work three stitches in each corner. If you grab up any of the loose tails from your beginning or ending chain, you can wrap them up in this little edge to keep it nice and neat. Try to keep your, um, the spacing of your stitches consistent on all four sides. When you get to the end or to the beginning, just uh, use a slip knot. To just tie off your work. And 
And then I like to just weave my loose ends in. All right, if you've got a, a contrasting color, now's the time we're gonna add that edge. And we're gonna just do the same thing that we did with the white yarn. We're going to um, single crochet into every, now this time we're gonna single crochet under every V that was formed by our last single crochet row. So the single crochet row that was formed with the white thread you see all those little V's, we're going to go under each one of those with our pink thread. So because I had 80 stitches that I single crocheted with the white, I'm gonna be doing the 80 stitches on top of those. So once again, we have 80 pink stitches going all the way around, working three into each corner. And once again, the three in each corner only count as one stitch. Try to catch that little yarn there. And I worked four into the corner here. And then just pick up and continue working under all those V's. Keep your stitches, keep your tension loose. but consistent. All right, when we're getting back to the beginning, we're gonna work right up until the next stitch, and then we are going to work into that very first stitch, and we're gonna work four into each stitch, like we did on the corners. Okay, and that's gonna create a little scallop. Then for the next stitch, we're going to just slip it. We're not going to see, we're going to take it through and then slip it through the first stitch without wrapping the yarn around. So that's a little slip stitch. So then we're going to single crochet four. Into one space. And then we're going to go under and we're going to slip stitch without crocheting it. how you get that sweet little scallop. Here we're gonna slip this. We don't wrap the yarn around it. It's just a way to carry your thread when you really don't wanna have any height. The slip stitch does that.
So stay in pattern going around all the corners in this case. Stay in pattern, um, alternating a scallop and a slip stitch. By the time you get back to the beginning, if you started with an even number of stitches, you will be able to have one slip stitch between your beginning and ending scallop. And if you don't, don't worry about it. It's perfectly imperfect. Use a slip knot to tie off your work and once again uh, use your crochet hook and you might actually want a smaller one to weave in the ends of the yarn. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope if you've never crocheted before that this gives you a little encouragement to crochet. Um, you can really crochet up a bunch of these quickly. To me, these work quicker than knitting does. Um, I'm actually gonna send some of these to a friend of mine who, I'm sending us some masks. <laughs> this is during COVID. So she's, she made some masks for me and I'm gonna send her some washcloths. And also my daughter wants them too. But um, hope you find this useful. And if you did, uh, you can see the full pattern, a printable pattern at the blog and the link for that is below. Um, and if you'd like to see more videos from Nurse and Nestle, you can click the little nest that's gonna be at the bottom of this video. Um, once again, thanks so much for stopping by. I do hope you found this useful and have a great day.